Michael? Michael, you get down from there. That's dangerous. Michael heard a voice call to him from the distance. It was his mother. How could this be? She was dead, he thought to himself as he glanced over. Michael! His mother called again in a panicked voice. He looked at her and realized he was high in a tree. He remembered this day. He was about five years old and he had climbed a large oak tree that was in their backyard. His mother had always forbidden him from climbing too high into trees. She had had a little brother who had died right in front of her when he fell from a tree they had climbed when they were young. Mom, I'm fine. I'm not a baby. He protested. You get down right this instant, young man. You're going to fall. She screamed up to him. She was right. Michael lost his footing and started to fall downwards. Then everything faded into darkness. None of this matters anymore, boy. You are not one of them. You belong to me. Michael, wake up, buddy. Santa came. A male voice gently woke him. An excitement took over Michael as he jumped out of bed. Santa came? Thank you, Dad. Merry Christmas. Little Michael shouted in joy as he rushed from the room. But he suddenly came to a stop when at the end of the hallway towered a large, dark figure. Where are you off to, boy? You can go nowhere without me. Dad? Dad, help! There's a scary man in the hall! Michael called out, but as he turned to run back to his father, he was only met with darkness. Foolish child, your father is dead. Your mother, too. Can't you remember? <laughs> the figure said to him as his laughter surrounded him. Michael slowly turned to face the figure whose eyes were now glowing a bright red and whose form was turning into smoke that shot towards him. Everything went black once more. None of this matters now. What you knew is dead and you may never have it back. All that matters now is the hunger. You must feed your savagery. Feed your hunger. Mortals are nothing but playthings. Food now. You are the darkness they fear. The monster under their bed that haunts their nightmares. You are not a man, but a beast who will ravage on the meat they provide. The voice seemed to come from everywhere, perforating the darkness that surrounded him. What was this? was this urge he had, this need to kill, to devour. Welcome aboard, Mr. Hamilton. We look forward to working with you. Another voice said. Michael opened his eyes as if they were closed for only a blink. It was Mr. Johnson's office. Mr. Johnson was the CEO of the bonds firm Michael had worked for. He remembered this day. This was the day he got the job he had been dreaming of. He was 22 and Mr. Johnson was a man in his 70s who had started this company from the ground up. He was a plump, friendly man who was very charitable. He would donate 50% of the company's profits to various charities against the pleas from the shareholders. This is what drew Michael to the company and also what drove the company to be so successful. People liked to work with a company that wasn't afraid to give back. Thank you, sir. I'm excited to be part of this, Michael said as he reached out to shake the man's hand. What his hand clasped down on was a solid, stone-cold hand that squeezed his hand with a force that rendered him helpless. The pain shot through him as he heard the bones crunch and snap. Fool, still holding on to the pathetic life you had. That is dead and gone. You belong to me. You belong to the hunger. Michael looked up at the clawed hand that imprisoned him. It was him, but it wasn't him. He had red eyes and the sharp, dangerous teeth of a predator. A smoke swirled around him as this evil effigy of himself smiled back at him with a hungry and sinister grin. Do you see now? Do you see what you are? I am you, you are me. Hold 
holding on to this pitiful past of yours is useless. Do not fight the hunger within you. Michael violently began to pull his hand away, finally breaking free from the oppressive grip this thing had on him and fell backwards. Except he didn't hit the floor. He kept falling as everything went dark around him. He shut his eyes tightly, trying to understand what was going on. His eyes snapped open with the sound of his wife screaming. He was in a hospital room. He remembered this day very clearly. It was the day his son was born. He looked down to see his head cresting as his wife pushed. The baby slowly came out wrinkled, skin slightly blue in the umbilical cord and a rush of blood and fluids followed behind. Suddenly, a burst of hunger took over him as he seen the blood rush from her body and collect on the floor. His mouth began to water at the sight of it. He faintly heard the sounds of his son's first cries, but all he could focus on was the fluids coming from his wife. The placenta followed and it looked delicious. He glanced around the room looking at the nurses and doctor. All of them looked as if they would taste like a fine steak. Rare. Raw. He felt his mouth watering more, and as he reached up to wipe the drool from his lips, he felt the teeth within his mouth long and sharp, ready to devour the flesh of everything in that room. Open your eyes. Michael opened his eyes. The stone floor he lay on was cold, and a hunger took over him as he lay there shaking. He caught a whiff of something wonderful between the smell of earth and mold. It was fear. It was flesh. It was food. The room was pitch black, though he could still see quite clearly. In the far corner of the room cowered a dirty man dressed in rags. When his gaze was introduced to the man, his hunger took over. He stood up, panting heavily. Everything seemed to have a reddish hue to it as he could see the life flowing through the man's body. The blood inside of him seemed to faintly glow and his heart shone bright within him. He could see that at the center of the heart it had a darker glow, a purplish sort of black. The man was looking every which way in a panic as he heard Michael's breathing change in the red of his eyes. Oh man, what the fuck? Hey, um, stay back, okay, man? You just stay the fuck away from me. The man said, trying to sound angry, but his fear betrayed him. A low growl echoed through the room as Michael lunged forward. The hunger was far too great to care about anything else. It ate his insides, demanded to be satiated. The man tried to take a swing at him, but was met with an easy swipe away as Michael took hold. He bit down into the man and tore a large chunk of flesh from the man's left shoulder. The man screamed in pain and tried to fight. The taste of the man's flesh filled Michael's mouth like a sweet treat that only made his hunger grow. He swallowed it down and bit again. The man's screams turned into a gargled mess as he was savagely devoured and torn apart by Michael, each bite tasting sweeter than the last. When the last of the flesh was gone, Michael proceeded to tear the bones apart, snapping them in half and sucking the marrow out with a primal attempt to satisfy this hunger. When it was all over, Michael sat back, panting, covered in blood. He heard footsteps echoing towards him and the sound of a large squeaking lock and door. Torchlight flooded the room as the door opened and there stood Victor with a large, happy, and loving smile on his face.